Now I was fortunate to follow this one in, this lovely lime, sort of gold, yellowish uh, R107. It's a, a Y, so I guess what, 2001? They say smoking kills, but let's hope it uh, doesn't harm this Marlboro livid, uh, livid Volvo 850 wagon. Built on a specific three-door body shell, only built for its derivative, is these Yaris GRs. These are incredible cars, pretty much sold out now. Uh, quick, four-wheel drive, and successful in rallying as well. My 1990 Ascot Grey Mercedes-Benz. Now this is gorgeous, this is a Visconti green uh, Alfa Giulia, absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Uh, with a tan interior, colour combination no longer available with those lovely yellow calipers. Gorgeous, eh? There's a huge variation of cars to see, including this beautiful Mark 1 Escort Mexico from, I think, 72, looking at the plate. 72, 73. And a modern-day Toyota Supra. This is the corporation built with BMW, based on the Z4 platform, but as a, sold as a hardtop by Toyota. Good to see a late Mini Cooper, this one with the Sport Pack on, the wider arches and the wheels. Now this one, it's a Mark 1 Audi TT. I think that colour might be aviator grey, I'm not quite sure. But what it has got is that beautiful so-called baseball, uh, baseball um, glove interior. Uh, that was an option back in the day and it's very distinctive. And the lovely BMW E28, this lovely shark nose design. Fantastic looking car, isn't it? gorgeous with those load suspension those sort of BBS type lattice wheels often overshadowed by the 205 GTI this 309 GTI Peugeot I believe this was originally a design that was supposed to be a Matra or Simca or something like this please pop that in the comments I can't remember but this sort of and talking of looking really good we've got a very rare relatively rare 306 rally stripped out not quite so stripped out as the 105 and 106 rallies but a lightweight version and another version i think that's probably a gti 6 that one rather than a rally going past a couple of lovely looking clios and e36 coupe these actually the design of these is sort of snub and design i think is a, is a bit prettier than the e46 and talking of which there's an e46 next to it and if you want to bring some of the designs right up to date i think you've got an m4 here you can see a massive variation of cars here and a porsche cayman from a time when a wedgie wasn't wearing your trousers too high or would give you one this is the harris man designed Austin Princess, originally only as a booted version, then later as the Ambassador became a hatchback. Very impressive. Squeezing in is this Jensen CV8, I think. Oh, and look at this. A Lancia Delta Integrale Evo. A little fans running on that one. It's getting a bit hot, like my Mercedes on the way into this event today. Some big queues, a lot of people here. Built to K car dimensions is this Honda S660, never officially imported. Uh, looks like this one's come on from Japan. It's obviously right hand drive. Let's just take a look. It's difficult to, to see. There's actually quite a bit more space in there, would you think, given the size of the car? That's lovely. One of the last uses of the Wankel rotary engine, a production car, was this Mazda RX8. Um, they've got a reputation for you know high oil consumption and high fuel consumption but nothing revs like them and an unusual bit with these is you'll see the rear doors it has got rear doors you need to open the front doors first but you've got these rear doors to actually access that passenger space so it's actually more practical than it looks largely engineered and built by Porsche due to capacity issues with Mercedes when they had the 140 in production is this W124 500e Yes, this is a super powerful car. It's very understated. You've got to pretty look, look pretty closely, I should say, at those arches. Look how much those arches bulge out from the body. That really is a special car, only sold in left-hand drive. I think originally sold as the E500, and then I think it became the 500E. Nevertheless, a pretty car. Gorgeous Maserati Camzin squeezing in there. I think it's a Camzin. 
what a beautiful beautiful car and what a shape that is that's glorious isn't it it sounds pretty good as well proving golfs could be any time any place anywhere is this martini liveried golf mark 4 which is certainly quite distinct with that red interior not forgetting those martini stripes aston martins we've got we've got three of them here oh they sound good go on give us a blip and completing the set we've got this gorgeous baby blue one a sierra cosworth one of the original ones and next to it although it, it is an escort it's built on the chassis of the sierra built for homologation purposes i think this color is called malar green this escort cosworth lovely looking car isn't it imported japanese market honda integra only the previous version was imported here uh, hillman imps yeah you want one of those we've got one of those as well modified with some fantastic looking rims on it look at those Honda S2000s, yeah, we've got a couple of those as well. One modified and one unmodified, built to celebrate the, um, I think it was the 50th anniversary of Honda or something like this. Um, but uh, lovely cars and quite collectible. BMW E30, now this is the Bauer conversion. So not the full convertible, these were built by the Bauer coach building company and, and actually probably a little bit rarer and a glorious shark nose e24 bmw 65 csi left hand drive looks like it was imported but a, a beautiful looking car in that uh, light blue metallic now this is a lovely e36 m3 uh, to my mind probably the best of the bunch to be honest with you um, as far as they go they've just got sort of heavier and bigger but this is really distinctive i think it's in boston might be in boston green it's a, certainly a lovely color one of the descendants of the original S-Class or Sonda class is the 71 Mercedes. Absolutely lovely looking car and it's a right hand drive so it's a UK car as well. Next to it we've got um, an E30 Touring which is uh, quite, quite modified actually. You certainly wouldn't miss that spoiler in the car park and we haven't today. Here's one of those officially imported high revving Honda Type R's. These were officially imported this generation into the UK. A brand that no longer exists in the UK and not sold in the UK, Mitsubishi Lancer, when Mitsubishi were all about rallying, uh, Lancer was the car to have. Next to it, an R32 Mark IV Golf. I think these were 3.2 litres. A very hardcore Renault uh, Megane Sport R26R carbon bonnet on there, as you can probably see, and full race harnesses, and of course, a roll cage where the back seats would be. A couple of Mark 1 Focus RSs, uh, RS now discontinued in Focus, these uh, two look gorgeous, and parked up we see the Maserati comes in I think it was that we saw earlier VW uh, caravanettes vans combis whatever you want to call them splitty uh, single screen or later I think that's the T4 the choice is yours uh, right next to which lurking behind is this beautiful series one e-type fixed head and an Alpha Junior now I'm not sure if this is one of the fabled golf rallies, uh, left hand drive sold only mainland Europe but uh, it's certainly a distinctive looking car with those square headlamps at the front. A nice moggy here, Lamborghini Aventador LP610, I think it's the Aventador next to, I think this is, it's an aerial but it's the cross country aerial so uh, this really is a go anywhere vehicle wow. and 007 himself in town with this Aston Martin DB5 and it's the right year isn't it what C66 glorious car whilst I do struggle to see the point of some of these uh, not really practical in any sense of the word but then it's not meant to be is this McLaren Elva look at that fantastic interior and that sort of carbon effect if you can see that a carbon effect weave body and that interior uh, 
Yeah, okay, I think I'll leave that one, thank you. I'll try and get a better look at this. It seems McLaren's designers only really have one design in them, but uh, they've, they've certainly worked it well. This is the speed tail. We'll try and get a look around the back. It's best viewed from the back because of the extended bodywork. And this is what I was saying about that extended bodywork at the back. It's not a car that's to everybody's taste, um, but nevertheless, very distinctive. A um, Mercedes SLS. Another McLaren, a 720S this time. And this is special, the Muck McLaren. So actually this was cooperation with Mercedes. This is the SLR. Now these are special, you know, they're still fast, probably not as fast as, uh, as in the day, but um, they really are a distinctive looking vehicle. And this is the Ford GT40. Uh, so this was built as a celebration, I'm not sure what it's Ford Centenary second time around this is what they built and it's uh, a lovely looking car isn't it uh, porsche 911s yeah we've got a few of those too or three wow yeah we've got quite a few porsche 911s i won't even attempt to go through every derivative here uh, but i'm certainly drawn to that purple one near the end which looks quite a distinctive looking vehicle it's getting quite uh, still quite crowded here now so bear with us um, we'll get to this long line of uh, Porsches, we're into, uh, looking at this, we're into some Caymans and then something more to my own taste is this, I think, 964 generation earlier car B, that would be 84, yeah, I can go with that, that's more for me. So back on the move again, another Porsche, some bike engine sort of Caterham lookalikes and then, interesting, let's just go through the middle here, now this is the extremely brave design Renault Sport Spider sold without windscreens or in this case with the windscreens I think this was something that was designed by Patrick de Quermont it, it's amazing how this ever got signed off because it's such a brave design for a volume car manufacturer let's take a quick look inside it's a glorious car not many I think in the low hundreds of these came into the UK but on a day like today where else would you rather be a Ferrari 550 and just creeping out quietly is this electric Porsche Taycan. Originally planned to be a joint venture with Caterham and then subsequently Caterham left that relationship. Uh, these Renault Alpine 110s. It's the only Renault Alpine model but obviously since then uh, Renault have renamed their Formula One team so it's probably not likely to be the last of that brand we see. I do like the version with those gold wheels. That does work well doesn't it? Gold wheels and that blue bodywork looks really really smart. What a lovely car. Audi R8 V10, R8 V10 there. Next to it an Elise. Uh, yet another McLaren 720S and this i think i think this might be a mclaren gt i'll have to check that one i'm not up on that subject matter you know the styling variations on these mclarens are very subtle and another 720s here wow and later bmw m3s and oh the golf's leaving now let's have a listen to that golf shall we let's see if he uh Smell the unleaded. I'm not sure if this BMW M4, I think it is, is a wrap, but it's uh, certainly a very distinctive colour. Next to an M2 or an M2 lookalike, and an interesting colour on that uh, Supra. I followed that car in here, and it uh, stands out in the traffic. Let's put it that way. What a fantastic effort bringing this Vauxhall Viva n-plated uh, viva absolutely brilliant fantastic thanks guys this has brightened my day anyway let's bring things back down to reality after rows and rows of look-alike mclarens very nice as they are this is the only one of these i've seen so far today very distinctive supercharged corvette in the background a porsche leaving very quietly 
not. Lex Siege and a Ferrari 458. I think that's in the background there. Yeah. I'm never quite sure whether I've actually found a real Cobra or a replica. I don't know, guys. I mean, please comment if uh, somebody knows the difference. Another Audi TT, but a glorious looking one next to an Aston Martin. I think that's a DB9 or maybe... Let's take a look. Okay, I had to cheat. It's a Vanquish. Just 645 of these William Towns designed Aston Martin Lagondas were ever made. What a controversial looking shape with those very narrow front headlamps and that long body really was a, an absolute uh, standout design by William Towns. I'm pretty sure this is the R33 Skyline on my modern day BMW M5. What a brutal car that one is. Yet another McLaren 720S. Back down to earth with a Golf Mark V and then a lovely collection uh, Evo 5 um, and a very nice Escort RS Turbo. If I can get in there out of the crowd you can have a quick look at that one inside hopefully. Lovely Recaros. Typical Mark V Escort trim inside. Uh, these were the ones to have, weren't they? Now, this one certainly had a fair bit of work. Sorry about the background noise and the generator. Um, what a fantastic Porsche 924S. I'm so glad I didn't miss this one. It's not an S by the look of it. Um, glorious looking car. Or is it a 944? I think it's a 944, yes. I was wrong. Minus 10 points. It's a 944. What a lovely Porsche 911 Speedster. That's a lovely looking car, isn't it? See the uh, Speedster designed top at the back and lovely interior. And it's even got some racing numbers on it as well. What a glorious looking Porsche that one is. Sorry about the generator again. This is a lovely, lovely Bullet Mustang. Or certainly Bullet style. GT500 Mustang. Very nice. So thanks again for joining me at the Collecting Cars Brooklyn's Coffee Run. I hope you enjoyed the cars that were here today. Sorry I didn't manage to capture them all, but hopefully got as many of them as, uh, as I could. A really interesting collection and uh, people are starting to leave now. So thanks again for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.